I'm Robin Murdoch live inside the weather beast where it has been a slow go this morning. Snowy conditions brought the morning commute to a crawl. How the roads are looking right now in my live report. Stay with us. Outfit may not be top of your mind when taking a trip, but you may want to reconsider what kind of tell you the color that gets you better treatment the next time you fly. Working for you. Fox 2 News Live at 11 starts now. Well, that'll be good to know, and we'll get to that real quick here. But first, good morning, and thanks for being with us. I'm Amy Lang. And I'm Amy Andrews. Yeah, road conditions. A big challenge this morning. Fox 2's Robin Murdoch. M Murdoch, our complete, like, stud when it comes to being outside. She's got it weather. all. <laughs> uh, she's out there right now with a, how it looks. Right out there. I always tell you when we're walking in in the morning, I'm just thankful for you. And you yeah, we are. Outside. <laughs> no, we are, we are inside the weather beast. So this is the place to be when you are doing a storm coverage, when you're talking about uh, weather-related issues. Uh, it does not get better than being inside this warm vehicle. Now, we are currently on uh, the south field right now. We uh, just passed Allen Park uh, just a little bit ago. We've been driving around. I'm going to show you the roadway here. As you can see, it's a little bit uh, messy in this spot in particular, but it really is is uh, kind of hit and miss depending on where you go. But the roads, uh, they have been slick. They have been snow covered throughout the morning commute. It was down to a crawl at times. Lots of brake lights. Kelly Rowe was talking about lots of accidents all over Metro Detroit this morning. And really the tie-ups do continue at this hour in some areas. And so do those sloppy conditions. Now, we really did not get a lot of snow, but the tie timing of the snow is everything and the timing of the storm well it could not be worse it happened right in the middle of the morning commute so throughout the morning we were on interstate 94 we were on telegraph 696 on the southfield freeway for the last couple of hours and it really was a similar scene on each of those roads some roads had a little bit more snow some had a little bit less drivers on all of them though really did appear for the most part to be taking their time and really driving for the conditions. That is exactly what you want to see. Take a listen to a couple people we caught up with near uh, 12 Mile and Telegraph this morning and their take on the road conditions. Yeah, I saw a couple of people slip as they were trying to come out of uh, uh, out of the complex, you know, or, you know, just coming around the corner. So, you know, definitely slow down. Well, we kind of been spoiled. And so now uh, we're actually... Uh, uh, the the, the uh, spoilage is over, so now we're now we're dealing with what we have to deal with. So again, we are inside the weather beast right now, right on a south field, uh, passing a Fort Street right now, not far from uh, the Allen Park area. Lincoln Park actually is where we're passing through right now. Uh, you can see some of the snow on the roadway. Not really bad here at all. And we have seen a number of uh, road crews out trying to clear away some of the roads, make them a little bit more passable. But again, it really is hit and miss depending on where you go. Now, of course, if you do have to head out this morning, I would say it's still a good idea to give yourself a little bit of uh, extra time to head out because you really do not know uh, what you are going to encounter because every road is so different. Also a good idea to really increase your following distance. We have also seen that this morning uh, because you never know if you're going to have to make uh, a, a quick stop. And so just giving a little extra distance can really make all the difference. We are live inside the Weather Beast. I'm going to send it back to you guys in the studio.
Yeah, it was definitely slow going for me coming in um, on the lodge uh, this morning, uh, Robin. And um, just, I'm really glad to see that you're in a vehicle instead of outside in the weather for a change. It must be nice. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's amazing how uh, weather reporting has changed, uh, you know, over the years. I was, uh, you know, I did do a hit earlier this morning on the side of the road like we used to the old school days. Uh, but yeah, technology has certainly changed and this really does just give us, you know, a better idea, a better feel for exactly how the roads are in our area. You know, we've been talking about it, it was a slow drive. Hopefully things um, are going to get better, but from what I understand, we have a little bit of snow on the way tomorrow as well so uh, we likely will see see the same story tomorrow all right <laughs> to well you thank you Robin as always we appreciate you we're all gonna now check with Kelly on some more road conditions so thanks so much yeah, Robin really nailed it. Obviously, she's looking at the roads, but uh, it's more slush than anything at this point. So that's good. Doesn't mean it's not still slippery. Earlier this morning, this map behind me was completely red and yellow slowdowns across the board. The crews have done such a great job. They must have cleared over 20 accidents today. Now we're just down to a couple. So if you're heading out soon, just keep them in mind. It might slow you down a little bit, but not too bad. It's looking the best it has all morning. But there are two in the same spot. This is one I've seen accidents pop up all morning so maybe tomorrow uh, keep your eyes peeled this might be a, a tougher spot with weather on the Southfield Freeway southbound at Outer Drive you'll see an accident there and another on westbound 94 at Telegraph some some slower speeds as well as you can expect on northbound 75 just before seven mile you'll see a lane blocked on this one but see speeds are already up around 50 so uh, compared to much earlier where it was crawling traffic it's looking a lot better in fact they just reopened northbound US 23 now back open between Silver Lake and Lee. A very bad accident over here. Close that for the last two hours. So if you have to head this way, it's back open. Speeds look good. Through the Fox Cam Alive, look at 75 and 14 mile. That's all to say you should still take it slow. Wet is still dangerous, but uh, speeds are looking a little bit better. Derek, I will send it over to you, Mr. Weather Authority. Kelly Rowe, thank you very much. Let's get to your forecast here where we are still dealing with some snow. We're not completely snow free at this point. You can see with the satellite and radar that extreme southeast Michigan. Michigan. Still with those snowflakes being picked up, we suspect those are going to stick around until around noon, tapering off afternoon, giving us a break. And this is the break then through the afternoon and evening. But that next weather system is coming tomorrow morning. So we dealt with it this morning. We're going to deal with it again tomorrow morning. So a slow drive in on Thursday and a slow drive in on Friday too. We picked up about one to two inches today. Tapering off through the afternoon. Friday's system, depending on where you're located, down in Monroe County and uh, Lenawee counties, could be three inches there with that next round coming through after midnight, continuing until you know, probably through around 11 a.m. again on Friday. Thankfully, today, not quite as bitter cold. Those feels like numbers are in the upper teens and low 20s. Fox Future Cast showing the timing of all of this. Our break through the evening, here's 8.30 p.m. tonight. You can see that. And then here comes another round of snow with that bullseye remaining to our south, but we still get clipped by it, which is is why we have that snow in the forecast. Let's check the next three days, taking us through the end of the work week into the weekend. Saturday, Sunday look drier but colder. We wake up Saturday morning. It will be four, feeling like 10 below. Amy, over to you. We are following developing news from overnight in Harrison Township. A fire tears through the Ben Venoto Italian restaurant on Jefferson, south of Emmerich Street. The owners say the restaurant will be closed indefinitely. Thankfully, no injuries were reported. The cause of that fire is still under investigation. Well, breaking news overnight, a house catches fire on Detroit's east side. And one person was injured from the flames. The house is on Cardone near Kniff in Oakland. A person inside was hospitalized from burns and a dog was taken to the Humane Society. A neighbor talked about just what she saw. They were big flames, um, so they was, they was coming out the windows up, up top and yeah, it was just... And uh, you know, the houses are pretty close together. That's why I was nervous. And uh, could you feel like the, the heat? Coming? I smelt it. I smelt the smoke. And then I heard it. I heard the glass breaking. Well, investigators are not sure yet just what caused that fire. Well, Amy, thankfully, the extreme temperatures are easing a bit, but for first responders out working in it, it's still causing real safety concerns. This week, an EMS driver slid into a police car while rushing to a scene. Sometimes fire hydrants can freeze up, forcing crews to try to use the next one, but even that's not guaranteed to work. 
paper in this weather, it freezes almost automatically. Uh, uh, just as soon as it touches you. When you're wet in this cold weather, uh, it's something different that you can't even describe. Crews often rotate to keep themselves warm. Also, snow on roofs, that can complicate emergency response because it increases the risk of a building collapse. And some scary moments for a young girl at the Somerset Collection in Troy. All of a sudden, one of the 10-year-olds got pushed face first into the kind of the display where the in front of the food is. So we're told this 10-year-old was with a group of friends ordering a cookie when police say this woman, 25-year-old Rihanna Valentine, shoved her for no reason. The child's head hit the glass, leaving a bruise, and officers later arrested Valentine after reviewing surveillance video. That person kind of started laughing and like it was a big joke and, and then kind of made their way through the mall. I think the person just walked by and saw the kids standing there and thought it would be funny to kind of show off to the group they were with. Really not funny when you're charged with misdemeanor assault. She's been ordered to wear a tether pending trial.